The late great Peter O'Toole, renowned for his mesmerizing talent, striking blue eyes, and larger-than-life personality, is no doubt one of the best actors of his generation. It's truly remarkable how he's achieved such recognition despite always being under the influence. Join Facts First as we present Peter O'Toole confirms he was always drunk. Peter Seamus O'Toole was a charismatic performer who graced the stage and screen with his undeniable talent. Immersed in the world of theater, he honed his craft at the prestigious Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. His talent shined brightly on stage, earning him acclaim as a masterful Shakespearean actor, both at the renowned Bristol Old Vic and with the esteemed English Stage Company. The theatrical world was forever changed in 1959 when young O'Toole made his West End debut in the captivating play The Long, The Short, and The Tall. His performance was mesmerizing, and it left audiences craving more. In 1959, O'Toole made his way onto the big screen, and the world was changed. His breakout role as T.E. Lawrence in the epic film Lawrence of Arabia catapulted him to international fame and earned him his first Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. He later portrayed King Henry II in two different films, Beckett and The Lion in Winter. He's also recognized for his performances in Goodbye Mr. Chips, The Ruling Class, and My Favorite Year. Despite his impressive track record, he shares the record for the most Oscar nominations for acting without a win with another talented actress, Glenn Close. In 2002, the Academy Honorary Award was bestowed upon him as a recognition of his outstanding career accomplishments. O'Toole's talent has been recognized with a stunning collection of accolades, including four Golden Globes, one BAFTA Award, and one Primetime Emmy Award. He's graced the silver screen with talent in a variety of films, ranging from the playful and whimsical What's New Pussycat to the thrilling heist film How to Steal a Million. But despite his impressive and illustrious career in acting, O'Toole found it challenging to maintain his esteemed social standing without blemish. How Others Despised Him The world of acting is known for its fickle nature, and colleagues are held in high esteem. However, Diane Kruger's collaboration with Peter O'Toole left a bad impression on her, as she discovered firsthand the awfulness of working with him. Kruger remained unimpressed by his renowned charisma when they worked together on the film Troy. Kruger, a talented actress, bravely revealed that working with the legendary actor and free-spirited icon was far from pleasant. She shared he often appeared under the influence, adding an extra layer of difficulty to their time on set. She revealed Peter O'Toole as the most ruthless actor she'd ever collaborated with. Kruger revealed that O'Toole's top priority was making sure his identity was widely recognized. The crew members were quite worried about his well-being during filming due to his physical condition. The elderly and frequently intoxicated actor faced a daunting challenge during production as he had to climb around 100 steps in sweltering 120-degree heat. It was a test of physical and mental strength. An air of concern hung over the set as people doubted his ability to make it to the end of the shoot given that he was always drunk. Regrettably, O'Toole's unpleasant demeanor was not a one-time thing. He was also known for Wild Nights with fellow actors Richard Harris, Elizabeth Taylor, and Richard Burton, where they would indulge in copious amounts of alcohol and revel in each other's company. In a sudden turn of events in 1972, Taylor put an end to her friendship with O'Toole after stumbling upon him and Burton in a pub completely drunk, hugging each other and joyfully singing Happy Birthday. In 1962, following the triumph of Lawrence of Arabia, O'Toole and Jason Robards hit up the Hollywood bar scene for a night of revelry. As they arrived at Robards' abode, a sight caught their attention. The stunning Lauren Bacall appeared before them, but her appearance was somewhat disheveled. It's rumored that O'Toole made a highly inappropriate remark, leading to a lifetime prohibition from their house. Ladies' man. While Peter O'Toole's reputation as a heavy drinker preceded him, he was also quite the charmer. Blood Moon Productions has recently released a captivating book called Peter O'Toole, Hellraiser, Sexual Outlaw, Irish Rebel that takes a deep dive into the scandalous tales surrounding him. In a daring wager, O'Toole's friend challenged him to a $150 bet that he couldn't woo and win over three of the most iconic blonde bombshells of the era, Jane Mansfield, Anita Ekberg, and Diana Dors. According to the authors of the book, Darwin Porter and Danforth Prince, this was a challenge O'Toole simply couldn't resist. 
Unsurprisingly, he emerged victorious. Despite his on-screen fame, Prince reveals O'Toole indulged in wild and extravagant week-long parties and sexual escapades that could rival those of ancient biblical times. Whispers of his daring exploits have become the stuff of legend, resurfing every now and then to captivate the imagination. One of his boldest romantic escapades was his brief romance with Princess Margaret. According to the book, O'Toole had a passionate affair with Queen Elizabeth II's vivacious younger sister after they met in 1963 at a royal command performance of his film, Lord Jim. As her marriage to Lord Snowden was falling apart, the two indulged in numerous intimate encounters. Intrigued by his charming demeanor, Margaret extended an invitation to her humble abode at the illustrious Kensington Palace. The morning after their initial romantic encounter, O'Toole was spotted cruising through the streets of London in her vintage Rolls-Royce Phantom, which she had traded in for a newer model not too long before. Also quite interesting was his involvement with Audrey Hepburn. In 1965, just before filming the romantic comedy How to Steal a Million, O'Toole had the pleasure of meeting the charming and youthful star. During that period, she was united in matrimony with renowned actor Mel Ferrer. Their passion ignited as they eagerly embraced each other into a night of romance. The intense romance between them blazed on even as the cameras rolled, and Hepburn was taken aback to discover she was expecting a child in December of 1965. The question of whether the father was O'Toole or Ferrer only added to the intrigue. Tragically, her pregnancy ended in miscarriage a mere weeks after she confided in O'Toole about the exciting news. Peter was heartbroken. The possibility of collaborating on a new cinematic masterpiece while keeping their passionate romance alive was dangled before them, but it never came to fruition. Health Complications and Death A serious illness nearly took O'Toole's life in the late 70s. He was misdiagnosed as having stomach cancer due to alcohol consumption. In 76, he underwent a life-changing surgery that involved the removal of a significant portion of his stomach and pancreas. This procedure left him with insulin-dependent diabetes. Again in the 70s, he had a close brush with death due to a blood disorder. O'Toole made the difficult decision to retire in July 2012 due to a recurrence of stomach cancer. He took his final bow on December 14, 2013 at Wellington Hospital in London. At 81 years of age, O'Toole remained unapologetic and continued to savor life's simple pleasures like the occasional pint of beer. In a conversation a few years prior with a BBC journalist, O'Toole was asked if he had any wisdom to share given his advanced years. With a twinkle in his eye and a glass of Guinness in hand, he imparted the words, keep smiling through. On December 21, 2013, a solemn funeral service was held for the legendary actor at Golders Green Crematorium in London. His remains were encased in a wicker coffin and consigned to the flames. In accordance with his final wishes, his family announced their plans to transport his ashes to the windswept rugged beauty of the west of Ireland. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Peter O'Toole? Let us know in the comments section below.